So we've looked at how we're going to manage the emails. Now we're going to look at how we can write and send brilliant emails that will make you shine. <coughs> what do diamonds mm -hmm. and emails have in common? Everlasting. Look, yes. That's actually true. I love that. Yes. That is the key point. <laughs> As Shirley Bassey sang us <laughs> and James Bond in the James Bond movie, okay, diamonds are forever. I had the theme song, but it wouldn't play. <laughs> <laughs> so diamonds are forever. I do hear Brian's very good at karaoke. Right. <laughs> That's bad enough, no. Okay, just see you in the lane. <laughs> okay. Because diamonds are forever, we want to make sure that they're going to be worth keeping. So this session is about writing emails and sending emails that are going to improve <coughs> your relationship with colleagues and clients because they're going to go, oh, it's all right, it's an email from Steve, his emails are okay. Not another email from Steve. That, that's more like it. Yeah, well, let's see how we can improve that. Okay. So they get the response. Now that response will be the one that you actually see as well as the one that you don't see. Okay. And again, it's about promoting your professionalism. When people say this is a professional outfit, happy to work with this mob because they seem to know, they seem to be organised, they seem to know what they're doing and they seem to understand me and that's really important. So we're going to look at why we need to value email skills. When to email and when not to email. Some structuring and sequencing techniques. Looking at some style and tone because that's sometimes where we can go very wrong. And then we'll look at how we're going to polish our little email gems. Okay. So, a reminder of our rules. Anything happens, workplace health and safety. Feel free to speak up, and you did a great job before. Contributing, that was great. Didn't notice any rudeness. I'm trying to get us back on track. And there was no criticism that, that I thought was criticism. Well done, let's stick to those rules. Now, this is what your pink sticky piece of paper is for. I'd like you to write down <coughs> what you hope to get out of this session on writing. Emails that make you shine. What do you hope to get out of this particular session? Uh, get you to come up and do it, but I think it's actually given the restrictions of this space that if I just collect them from you. Sorry. It's alright? Okay, you just have a lot of expectations of me. Okay. <laughs> no pressure. Alright, no pressure. Okay, before we look at that, I'd just like to quick round the room. I want you to tell me about one of the worst emails you've ever well, received. Let's not own up at this point to any actually sent. So, starting with you, Ben. Brian. Sorry, Brian. Um, I got one from a very disgruntled client, uh, cash register salesman. I won't mention any names, but uh, it was not only the most poorly written email I've ever had to endure through. Of spelling mistakes and punctuality, not that I should talk. <laughs> Mine's terrible, but um, just made no sense. He's contradicting himself throughout the whole thing. He's got his argument up here, completely contradicts his argument at the end, and it was just a mess. So how did that, that make you feel? Yeah, I, after I processed it and actually figured it out, a bit annoyed at first, but then got on the phone, called him and figured out what his problem was. But that took a while as well. Mm -hmm. Made me feel confused. Confused? Yeah. And annoyed? Yeah. So do you think he might have written that and he might have been in a confused and annoyed state? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so that came through. So you got the tone was very loud and clear. Yeah. Okay, Vanessa? Um, there was a phase here in the office where emails were not being received by us. The server wasn't connecting, so people uh. were sending us emails but we weren't necessarily receiving them. So I received an email from a client that had sent me a couple that hadn't been received and they were forwarded and then the last email was in, in capital letters and bold and why aren't you replying so that was frustrating 
because number one, if I'm not communicating back, maybe there is an issue with technology. So it frustrates me when people continue to forward the same email and I haven't necessarily responded. Um, and then of course the, the tone of it was in capital letters and very irate and um, it frustrated me because a phone call would have been good and we could have resolved the conflict immediately by just communicating and saying, hey, I didn't get it. So mm, that, was, that was frustrating both ends. They would have frustrated and I was frustrated. Mm -hmm. And you would have learned something about that client that they love email. They need response quickly. Yeah. yeah. Ben, what was the situation in email you'd like to share? Um, just ones of uh, recently over familiar uh, over familiarity. Mm, Some slightly yes. inappropriate things <laughs> that uh, were you know not written in what would be perceived as English. That uh, takes twenty minutes to try and understand what they've written and. Uh, Confused and annoyed. Annoyed and took up your time yeah. and what am I supposed to do with this? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Steve? Um, I think the emails are no mannerisms. Like, um, like I get emails every now and again that say, uh, I need a painter for a job on Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's no, hi Steve, uh, I need this, blah, 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 can you get back to me soon or something like that. It's just, I need this. And there's no hi, there's no bye, there's nothing. No it's no courtesy, no nothing, no matters, no nothing. So how does that make you feel? Oh, a bit ticked off that they, you know, they don't have the respect for me to be able to turn around and go, Hi Steve, this is what I need, blah blah blah, I'll be more than happy to help if they have a bit more, a bit more matters and a bit more respect about them, you know. So they they the email to go, I'm not gonna look at that at the moment. <laughs> and of course then they get buried under the others and then suddenly yeah. the person does get on the phone or worse to bring this <laughs> Okay, so emails to engage with clients yeah, and engaging being a two-way street. How to word an email professionally, well hopefully we will get through that. Okay, better return on investment <coughs> with emails, investment of time, yeah, yeah, and communicating with people, more, more exacting. Okay, again better response and get people to act faster. Mm. Okay, that's about sending the, you know, the message out and being clear in the sending of your message. I'm just going to do something with DVA here. When you have communication, any kind of communication, whether it's between people or machines, you've got something here and you've got something here. It goes like that. And there's two extra things. So this is the sender, the receiver, two extra things. You have um, what we call noise. Very exciting stuff happening in quantum physics at the moment, the noise. <laughs> but I won't go into that right now. Um, and then you also have feedback. So what can happen with emails is that you don't know what noise is going on that's going to affect that, like the technology coming down. You don't necessarily know what's going to stop that clear message getting through. So you have to work harder as the sender to make sure that you can do as best you can with that and not put all the emphasis on the receiver. But you will find out how clear you were from this feedback. And sometimes the silence is that deafening feedback. Yeah. That's just putting that in a bit of scientific perspective there. Okay, so I'm hoping connecting with these, that th these are the outcomes that we'll have from a quick session now on email writing. Understanding the impact of the brand. Because when people are frustrated with Bartercard, that's not good for Bartercard, it's not good for Bartercard Rhythm and West. As you know, you, you, when you get those bad emails, that's how you feel. Thinking about the reader's expectations, the way they behave. It's about, we're going to look at some planning. You'll know how to plan and structure and some, applying some language techniques. Okay. And with the worksheet there, by the end of this session, I'd like you to write me a very brief but email that indicates to me that you have learned from this. So if you get the urge to start writing, feel free to do that, okay, as something comes along. Okay. So let's have a quick look at why the skills are important. Emails are forever. We've already talked a bit about this. They are forever. And they'll come back and haunt you. They will be used in court cases to prove something. You might delete it. But that doesn't mean that it's gone. Somewhere it exists in cyberspace. Somewhere. But the other thing, 
is confidentiality is not guaranteed. With email, you talked about security issues. You might say on your email, you know, if this is not intended for you, you know, please, you know, pass it on, don't read it. But that's a huge trust uh, expectation. So if it really shouldn't be, if it's that secretive, be, be mindful of whether email is the right way to be sending it out because it might hit the wrong person, particularly if you've got people who have other people looking at their emails. Okay. It's not guaranteed. The other thing is with Gmail addresses. A lot of people don't realise this, but when you signed up for your Google account, because there's so much that you want to do with the Google, you've got to have the account, you just tick yes to the terms and conditions. But within those terms and conditions, they access your emails. A lot of people just aren't aware of that. So you might not have the Gmail account, but if someone is sending you something from a Gmail account, they've agreed that whatever they're sending you, they're waiving the um, confidentiality. So just be aware of that. It's not always the best way to communicate, is it? No? We know that. And, and you're a group of people, particularly, you're on the phone a lot, so that is the most natural form of communication for you, but there are particularly sometimes when it's not best to <coughs> communicate by email. And another thing we need to be aware of is the more consistent you are in the quality of your emails, the better for the brand and the more people are likely to say, register that this is a good thing. I'm just going to grab two scribes. Come on. Can I have two scribes, please? Okay, so on one side over here, would you like to step over here? That's I'd right. Like to. Okay, and Steve, on the other hand, is going to write on there. Now, when let's let's try out some ideas about when is a good time uh, to use an email to convey details to someone you're asking something of okay so so to make a request there's two things in there make a request and convey details when it's out of business hours you can send an email, you won't necessarily call somebody at 9pm, but if you are emailing, you could send through some information. Okay, you yeah. Here three hours after you finish. <laughs> yeah. When you're still here at the end. <laughs> Probably not going to be that well received to call. Yeah. Do you need a speedy response? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you don't need a, you know, when you don't need a speedy response. What about some occasions when you don't use email? Do we need a speedy response? Through conflict? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you might write conflict. Negotiations. I'm never really um, negotiating over the email, you know, so I put in writing. Yeah, <laughs> so 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 yes. I, I would put some negotiation, some negotiation situations. Um, if you've received an angry email, yeah. you should probably pick up the phone and call them back, not reply back in the email. Yeah. yeah, when you're in the heat of the moment. <laughs> yeah, so don't send her, you know, heat, heat of an argument. I put heat of argument. What about um, condolences? Would you say, you, gee, sorry to hear that your mother died? Would you send that by email? I'd send that by flowers. <laughs> yeah, those to flowers at Interpilly. Yeah, depending on who it was. Yeah. Okay, what about your sect? Probably not that well received. Yeah, so I, I just, you know, bad news. Bad news, be very careful. I mean, there are occasions when email is going to turn out to be probably the best way if we go back to those other situations of you've got to get a lot of information across. Mm. You'll we'll be sacking everyone, it's a great one. <laughs> and then <laughs> make sure you've got your tickets out of the and country. And sort of the conflict. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> okay. So there are times we know where we've got to stop and think about that. Okay, thank you, scribes. There are just times when it's not appropriate. Okay. This is what we need to be thinking about. Having a purpose. Now it might seem like a lot of work for every email to do this, but again, once you get it, it becomes a habit and you start to think about these things. And it's, it's a quantum effect. So 
the more important the email, the more important it is that you go through these steps. Yeah. What do I want to achieve with communication? Do I want to ask for information? Do I want to give information? Am I seeking approval? Yeah. Be very clear about what you want because that's going to determine is email the right option. So if you just start and then you, and you, you've already started to work on it, they go, oh, I shouldn't be sending this by email. Wasted time. Do it all the time, yeah. Just you know, use it. Use email, but don't abuse it. And I think a lot of people get into that trap of, you know, I've been in it myself. I think about all the terrible things that, that you know, times in my life at work where I've been miserable and stressed and it's been awful for me. There's been an email at the core of it. <laughs> you know, so to avoid that, you know, think about is this the right thing to do? And also think about the timing. If you know that the person you want to send this email to doesn't read their emails in the morning, is that the time for you to be writing it, sending it, expecting an answer? So you're going to get yourself all twisted and angst why they haven't they replied. So it's a little bit of the, the thinking about it and you'll have a much more positive experience of it. Okay, so let's look at some of the things we can do. And this is where you might like to start jotting it down. So <coughs> match your subject line <coughs> to the email. In, in that subject line you put, it's you know, seeking approval rather than hey in the subject line or um, from barter card try and connect it so the person can see straight away oh this is the email I've been waiting for or this is a low priority for me or oh they need an approval they need a signature they need an answer then they're more likely to respond if you've given them that clue up in the subject heading okay because nobody likes getting an email about something and then opening up and discovering it's about something else you've been sold to. We hate that. Okay? Segue into your message. And this is what Steve was talking about before, those manners. Hi Steve, last week I mentioned to you that I need a painter. Making that connection. Specify the connection. Uh, we met last week at a networking event and you said that you would send me some information about barter card. I'm just waiting on that. Segue it in. And specify what's the benefit so the person reading it starts to say, ah, I need to read this, I need to respond. So think about what have you got to offer them. Think about the connection and the importance. And if you could try and get that up in your first paragraph or so. Mm -hmm. Hi Ben. Um, Continuing our conversation from last week, that segue, and then you're pointing out the benefit. People want to know why should, why am I wasting my time reading this, mm. or why am I investing my time in reading this? What's in it for me? Always think about the wisdom. <laughs> this is a critical thing. This is as Ben is saying, you had no idea what what was expected of you. Would you please respond to me? by email before close of business today. So when you are, be very clear about what you expect of the other person. Think about all the times you've got emails and then you go, okay, and so you leave it and then you get the phone calls. Why didn't you respond? Well, you told me some facts, but you didn't explain what I was supposed to do with those facts. Now they're short and they're short. You can be too short because that's where you can have an issue with tone. Be as long as you need to be, but also think about if you're starting to, if it's starting to get long, give them the summary and say, just giving you some, you know, these are the, the, the bare bones of the situation, I'm gonna call you with the details. So then they know that, that to expect the call, or can you call me when it's convenient for you so I can go through the details? Or you're making an attachment Use your subheadings, use your bold, use your bullets, your point, your bullet points and your numbering. When people see numbers, they think, oh, there, there might be steps involved. I've got to do this, then this, then this, then this. Or there are four or five things that must be in this. And that's quite a simple thing to do, is to use that. Gone are the days where everything had to be big, long paragraphs. Short paragraphs. And when people see these little things like a bit of bold, or a bit of colour, or a bullet point, 
their eyes are attached. We used to read in a zigzag fashion. We used to read like this. With the technology and reading off screens now and the way there are things are far more visual, there's a lot more graphics, we tend to read more like this. So we, we look at what's there, we have a quick scan down or, or it's almost like a, a scan in that direction like that. Yeah. And we tend to go, it's like that, more like a flag. So think about, when, and then you see all these little bits of graphics in it and we go, oh, we jump. So think about what you can actually do with that. Okay, I'm jumping through. So you get the style. Tone and word choices. Have you heard of the Moravian principle? No. 55, no. 738. Okay. 7% of your communication, the words. Okay, that's the bit that people will interpret. The words make up 7%. 55% is in your non-verbals. So when you're talking to someone, you can see in their body language, the way they look at you, the way they're standing, the way they use their gestures. And the 38% is in that tone. Again, when you're face-to-face -face or even on the phone, you've got a better idea of their tone. But when you're just dealing with words on a screen, it's so that, you know, a gap for people to misinterpret your tone. I'll give you an example. Here's an email I read, and, <laughs> and this relates to... <coughs> Is something you've done? Okay. Hi Leanne, it was great at Ipswich and I just love the way we can network through the Kitchen Table Network. I just met this person, I wasn't quite sure who it was, I was trying to think, remember. Okay. Would you have some time this week for a quick cuppa with me as I would love to get to know your business better. I'd you know, love to get to know your business better. Um, we can refer clients. I'll be in Ipswich on Monday, still have a place in the afternoon. Can you let me know what's suitable for you, please? Looking forward to collaborating. Love, Margaret. I wasn't sure. Did she want to meet for business or ask me out on a date? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Maybe both. Yeah, not looks at that. Did you go on the date? <laughs> we met for coffee and we haven't spoken since. <laughs> wasn't meant to be. Wasn't meant to be, that's right. I wasn't going to allow it to be either. <laughs> okay. But, you know, I followed through and, you know, no wasn't for me, but when I got that email, I felt, I felt creeped out. Mm, yeah. yeah. Are you outside my window, breathing on it? Yeah, yeah, you know, it's... Okay, I've got another example here. Have a read of that and think, what, what, what's wrong with this picture? Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ow, that sentence hurts. My brain hurts. <laughs> I can't. I can't comprehend the second. Second. Right. I was expecting your response on my email for conversation about promotion. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but I, I was expecting your response. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. The thing got caught. It was unsolicited mail. Got caught up in my spam, so I didn't see the first one. Oh. The second one got caught up too, and because I do check my spam filters, I found it. Oh, I hope you're doing well. Seems friendly. Mm -hmm. I was expecting a response. <laughs> <laughs> well, bad luck. <laughs> 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 yeah, that one's blocked permanently. Yeah. Okay, so be mindful about the words that you choose and how they can cause a reaction in the other in the reader. Okay. Salutations and sign-offs. Okay, what we have here is that you, you have to know how to start that. Sometimes with an email, I, I tend to go, hi, whoever. It's, that's me, and I can get away with it. But sometimes I will do, dear, so-and-so, because I just think, oh, this is a more formal situation. And you have to gauge the situation and the reader, what do you know about them and how they might respond. Think you head. Um, you, and the usual thing is far better to be a little bit more formal than to be informal. Mm. I get that, you know, that, you know, just say people being too familiar. Okay? And the same with the sign offs, like you know, signing off. Ciao, um, oh, yeah. catcher. Once you've got that relationship with that person, particularly you've had more personal interactions with them. Maybe you can do that. But what does it say about your professionalism? And you've got to manage your personality with the <coughs> company that's paying your wages and their professional reputation. <coughs> Vanessa's alluded to this before. I'm not deaf. Sometimes you will use capital letters in an email because it is something to shout about. Preferably, yay, <laughs> a good thing, not a bad thing. Plain or HTML. 
If you're finding that you're getting emails from someone that's always in plain text, maybe that's how they prefer them. It can be a bit tricky for you to be switching back and forth on your computer. I personally, I like there's colour and movement in my emails. I like that. There are some people who find it annoying because it can take a while to download a message on a mobile device. Be careful of your choice of font and your colour because you've got to think about the reader. Where are they reading this? Are they reading it on their phone? Are they reading it on a tablet? Are they reading it in the dark? Are they, you know, how are they reading it? Because if you've got a squirrely font, and it might look like it's appropriate, but it can just spoil it. What's an appropriate font? And usually they're these sort of sans serif fonts, like Arial, Calibri, etc. Be careful with your choice of colour, again, how it's going to appear on screen. Um, Barter card, lovely green, but too much of it. Okay, you use it for effect, not your whole emails. And as a colour deficient person, no. sometimes you just can't read it. <coughs> I can't read black on pink or many colour combinations. Yeah, so. that's another thing, is keeping your paper, keeping the background mm. white. Okay. Uh, it's a downloading issue and it's a hard to read issue. It might look fine on your screen, but you don't know the screen resolutions of other people. What about these? Okay. <laughs> Sorry? No go. No go. Not in business. Look, if you are, you're, if, if you're, you've got a client who's, you know, got a funky business, you know, like they're to deal with kids or they're a little bit artistic, you know, whatever, they might do that. No. Generally speaking, avoid the emoticons. It took me six months to figure out why people were putting J full stop at the end of their emails. <laughs> that was a smiley face. That was so funny. Funny. It, out it doesn't show up on our computers no, if people yeah. are actually putting a smiley face of an old system. So yeah. Brian would say, why are you signing off with a J? My name's Brian, not J. <laughs> so that's a smiley face, Brian. Yeah. It's back to the relationship. Is that appropriate in your relationship? They might send it to you, but is that what you would agree to? Again, back to your protocols for Barca. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Text speak. What are we talking about here? What are we saying? No idea. Um, really? Idea. Really? <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. Um, the other one is, I think YOLO means kill me, I think. No. <laughs> you only live once. Oh no, so that's, I want to kill them because they're idiots. Okay. <laughs> they're like the most dangerous ones out there. <sighs> Lots of love. Yeah. Laugh out loud. <laughs> Uh, you could put it in the wrong context. People think you're saying lots of luck. Load of lies. Load of lies. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised you didn't get that in the previous email from uh, the bird who took you on a coffee day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should have read a bit further down the email. Maybe. Okay. So be mindful of these sorts of things. So we are going a fair bit over time here. Okay. It does matter. But you know, there are little little tools within your devices to check the spelling, to make a difference because you can get it so grammatically. Okay, so I'm getting rid of all that. <laughs> and the trick here is about making sure that all your devices, you've got it happening. Okay, yeah. These things do matter. Because you can put a comma in the wrong place and change the meaning. Okay. What's this no, thing called? Love. What's this thing called love? Mm. Okay, so you, you can change it. We, you know, and if you don't know, you might go, I'm just going to touch any of it. But use the tools that exist there. I fight with the grammar checker all the time. I don't agree with it all the time. But I'm glad it pulls me up on a few things. Okay. Okay, again, it's all in the timing. Think about when you're sending those emails out. Replying without regret. Those emails where someone has written something to you that just makes steam come out of your ears. That's the time when you go, do your breathing, <laughs> go and get your coffee. You might do your draft response. Or maybe you have to share something with someone. It's got to be an email because you've got to have all those facts there. Or there are a few people involved and you've got to have the exact same story for all the people who are going to receive that communication. But do your draft, do your breathing, check it, leave it, go away, come back before you hit press send because you don't want to regret it. Because emails are forever. Are forever. Okay. And you don't want to damage your relationship with client. Okay, yeah. So do your breathing, draft and revisit it. Okay. <coughs> and big isn't always better. So think about the size of your email. If 
if it's too big, it's got too many attachments, they're not going to open it. They might not even be able to, able to open it. And your great big email could be clogging up their system and stopping something else getting through. So be mindful of that. And that's where things like Dropbox and other cloud sharing tools are great. You should just send them an email saying, you know, here's a link to this file, you'll need it. So, recapping. Why are emails like diamonds? Typical, because they're forever. Okay, but they can also make you shine. They can also make people want to do business with you because you are attractive inside that screen. So emails with a clear purpose, what, purpose and relevance mm. are more likely to be read. And you've got to make that clear. I'm writing to you about this because. Yeah. Explain what you want the reader to do. Yeah. And when. Give them the uh, deadline. <laughs> of course. Okay. You might still ask them to do something, but if you haven't specified when you need it, they won't be able to flag it to mm. make sure they meet your deadline. So choose what words, words and time wisely. Yeah. Good at this game. Mm. Mm. It's like picks one word. <laughs> <laughs> and why do spelling, spelling and punctuation, punctuation and grammar. grammar? Why do they matter? Because I don't use them. <laughs> we need to get a spell check. <clears throat> yeah, and grammar checker. Yeah. But why do they matter? The meaning in the wrong place. It alters the uh, message you're trying to convey. Send you can alter it, yeah. Make you look unprofessional. Yeah. Yeah. You would send the best email in the world, you think, and if they get to the other end that's spelt wrong and full of bad grammar, they won't even bother and you lose your point. That's right. That's right. And you don't know if they're a grammar Nazi or not until you have learned that lesson mm. with them. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. Another thing yeah. is that it says, I don't respect you enough mm. to take the time to pay attention to detail. I don't pay attention to detail. Am I going to trust you with my business? Mm. If you don't pay attention to detail? That's what that says. Mm. That's why it matters. So thank you for that. And if I can just get you to take a few minutes, we're running a little bit over time, I'm sorry, um, to, to write me a quick email and to do the evaluation sheet. And when I say quick, it might only have two lines, but think about those things and there's a cheat box down the bottom there.